This is the first lecture for Chapter 3 for ODE. This chapter is devoted to nonlinear systems. The important points for nonlinear equations and nonlinear systems in general is that few have closed form solutions. We're not going to be looking for closed form solutions for most of these, okay? Um, and when you do draw the face portrait, they can be so complicated that it's very hard to make any sense out of it. So we will look at two structures and we can study these and it's not too hard to study them. One are the equilibrium values and their stability. These are studied by a technique called linearization. Now linearization is more than just lopping off the nonlinear terms. For example, if you have dx by dt equals x squared plus 2y and dy by dt equals, I don't know, sine y plus x cubed. Well, we'll put a linear term on here, 2x, okay? You don't linearize by just cutting these off. There's another technique. We're going to be using the Jacobian, actually, to do this. Then the other structure that we're going to study are the null clines. So the equilibrium values and their stability by using this linearization will find how the system behaves close to equilibrium values. The null clines give us more of a global look at the solutions because they divide the face plane into regions. We'll start by looking at linearization assuming that the equilibrium points have been found. I'm going to write the nonlinear system in general as dx by dt equals some function f of x and dy by dt equals some function g um, of x and y and note that these are autonomous to make things easier and we're also only using two-dimensional systems at the end of the homework I gave you an example for a three-dimensional nonlinear system the Lorentz equation so recall what equilibrium means at equilibrium these derivatives are zero and we'll use that in more than one way in a few minutes. The idea of linearization is that if you take a, a very enlarged picture about a point, no matter how nonlinear the curves are, if you get a small enough look, you're going to blow up the region right by a certain point, the curves are going to look linear. And the classic example, of course, are whoops, the cosine function and the sine function. These are nonlinear. So here's x, and so here's the sine wave coming through here like this, and the cosine wave, whoops, doing something like that. Okay, if you look right in this region here, right at zero, for example, and you you blow that up, and you look real close at that region, these curves, even though they're highly nonlinear, can be approximated as linear. Right here, I should put a little more to that, cosine looks like a horizontal line. It looks like 1. And sine looks like a diagonal line, x, right through here. Right, And this is for absolute value of x much less than 1, meaning it's really close to 0. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to select these equilibrium points and we're going to look in a region very close to them. So we start with the Taylor series about the equilibrium point. So here's our equilibrium point, and we're going to write a Taylor series about it, assuming that u and v are these distances. They're very small distances, or very small values, so x equilibrium plus u, y equilibrium plus v is a very small, gives a very small region about the equilibrium value. And this is the Taylor series. You can see it in the textbook on page 465. The first term we have, of course, are the constant terms. And then we have the linear terms next. And now we have, over here, not written, our higher order, and these are nonlinear terms, nonlinear in u and v. Since this is equilibrium, this is 0 and this is 0 by definition of equilibrium. 
and if u and v are very small, then squaring and cubing them, etc., is going to make them much, much smaller, so we neglect those terms we didn't even um, bother writing. And now we have the linearized system. We've got an expression for the linearized system about an equilibrium point. For the next step, we're going to take u and v as variables. I'll recall what, okay, u is some value of x minus the equilibrium, v is y minus the equilibrium, and we'll take the derivatives. Well, equilibriums are constant, so they don't really count, or rather the derivative is zero. And so we have dx by dt, dy by dt equals the function of x and y. But what's x? In our small little view of things, x is the equilibrium value plus u, and y, I'll write it down here, is y equilibrium plus v. We substitute that, and then we look back at our Taylor series, and for u and v small, all we need is the first part of the Taylor series, which is uh, consists of those linear terms. Ooh, this has to be y. Okay, and what do we have here? A first order linear system. This is exactly what we studied in the previous chapter. So by linearization, we have created a first order linear system. Remember a linear system we used to write as dy by dt equals a y. Our y is now uh, this solution vector, which is our uv, and a is this matrix. This matrix is the Jacobian matrix. And we use this to find the eigenvalues and then from that determine their stability. So here is that Jacobian matrix again, and it will be evaluated at each equilibrium. Um, so we'll have, okay, remember this, or recall this rather, whoops, don't recall that, a, y. To find the eigenvalues, we had a minus lambda i times v equals zero, and we solve for the eigenvalues by t putting the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero. We're doing the same thing here, except that the Jacobian evaluated at the equilibrium is now the matrix A, is now our coefficient matrix in our linearized system about the equilibrium point. The text likes to write a new system by writing dx by dt equals something, dy by dt equals something, using the Jacobian. I just leave it as a Jacobian because that's where you need it to be. You're using this to replace the A in your typical analysis of a first order linear system. And here's what will happen. If the eigenvalues for the associated with that um, Jacobian are distinct, real and distinct, then both the linear and the nonlinear system will behave like a saddle, sink, or source at that equilibrium point. If the eigenvalues are repeated, then the linear and the nonlinear system will behave either like the ray or the single tangent pattern. If you have a complex eigenvalue with a nonzero real part, both will behave like spirals, either source or sink, depending on the sign of the real part. Now there are two exceptions to this. Uh, for a complex eigenvalue with zero real part, the linearized, linearized system using that Jacobian will have a center, but the actual nonlinear system may be a center or it may be a spiral source or sink. The other case is um, the case of a zero eigenvalue. I'm not considering that here. So now we're going to look at the eigenvalues um, associated with the Jacobian matrix evaluated at each equilibrium point. And that's about as far as we can go talking about it, so let's work through an example. So we're starting with a nonlinear system here, and this is our F, and this is G. Now in this case, we can just look here and figure out what the equilibrium points are. There's one at the origin, and there's one at x equal 1 and y equals 0.
So now to investigate the behavior near these, near these equilibrium points, we calculate the Jacobian. We don't have to go through all that analysis before. We're just going to calculate the Jacobian. Here's the Jacobian and um, the system just to rem is minus 2x plus 2x squared. So we take that derivative and get, you know, this is your f. And then the dy by dt was minus 3x plus y. So taking the derivatives, we get this matrix. And right away we can see what's going to happen. This is going to be a triangular matrix and the eigenvalues are going to be right along the edge, so we right along the diagonal, so we don't really have to um, go through the whole problem. We will in the next example. But let's proceed here. So we take that Jacobian and we evaluate it at the first equilibrium point, which is 0, 0. Okay, so here's the Jacobian at 0, 0, and this is the um, matrix that we get. It's as though our A matrix in our first order system was, and we can go ahead and work through determine of A minus lambda I equal to zero and solve for lambda, or we can use what we know uh, from that previous work in chapter two and say that the eigenvalues are right along the diagonal. So here we have two eigenvalues, minus two and plus one, two distinct real eigenvalues of opposite signs, this equilibrium point, both the linear and the nonlinear system, will behave as a saddle. Now we look at the other equilibrium point, which was 1, 0. Evaluate the Jacobian there, and we might have to you know, do more work, but in this case we're in, we have the same nice situation where the eigenvalues are right along the diagonal. So we have two eigenvalues, two distinct real eigenvalues, both a positive sign. This is a source. Notice we aren't going to look for eigenvectors. We just stop right here. All we want to do is label the equilibrium point. So here is the solution of that system, the nonlinear solution of that system. So we're not right down on top of that eigen, I'm sorry, we're not right down on top of that eigen, I mean that equilibrium point. Uh, let me move this up a little bit. Well, that was handy. When we did the linearization, we were right down here somewhere, right on top of it. But now we're looking more globally just to show the pattern. So this was a saddle. You can kind of see that it looks like a saddle when you, um, you know, you've got, look at these arrows, some pointing towards it, some pointing away from the equilibrium point, and it looks nonlinear. But now we know that that equilibrium is a saddle. Here's the other equilibrium, and it was a source. This is at the equilibrium of, whoops, 1, 0. And if you look at the arrows, you can agree that this is a source of sorts. It's not the same as a source for a linear system with those, I, those linear eigenvectors running through the equilibrium point. Now we'll look at the null clines and then we'll repeat this analysis of using the Jacobian. So what are the null clines? In null clines you're going to have two of them of course. In one case the x null clines, um, the derivative of x dx by dt is zero. Since dx by dt is zero, these null clines will always be um, crossed by the direction field that is vertical or be aligned with the direction field that's vertical. So you say that the field is going to be up or down along the x null cline. Then we look for the y null clines and because dy by dt is zero, the field across or in line with the y null clines is going to be right or left. Right, so it's horizontal, this one's vertical. Okay. 
the x and y null clients intersect at equilibrium points. Right? And of course the benefit is, as before, null clients divide the phase plane into regions. So the linearization gave us a behavior right near equilibrium points. The null clients give us a better look, um, more look at the global behavior of the system. And the same principles apply as applied previously. If the null client is a solution and the conditions for uniqueness hold, then it cannot be crossed right, by another solution curve. If the null client is not a solution, then it can be crossed by a solution curve. If it's a um, y null client, it will be crossed in horizontal direction. If it's an x null client, it will be crossed vertically. So we'll run through now an example of using the null clients and also of linearization. So we're going to look at this nonlinear system here, which is um, fairly common. Different people on the internet have put up examples of it, which is where I took the uh, phase portrait, the graph of the of the null clients. I did copy that, but the person I copied it from appears to have copied it from Berkeley too. So. Okay, um, so now we have this nonlinear system. This is the f of x and y. This is g of x and y. Okay, what are the null clients? For the null clients, we set, let me clear the screen for a second. We're going to set this to 0. Obviously, x equals 0 is one solution. Solving for y, we have this line here. In the first um, distribution, of chapter 3 of this uh, written lecture, there was a sign error here. But the sign is correct the way it's written right here. This is correct. Okay. Those are the x null clients. Here's the y null client. Obviously, y equals 0, or the x axis, is one null client. And again, you have a line. These happen to be lines. Not all null clients are lines. In nonlinear system, they can be curves, and we will have an example of that later. The x and y null clients, I'm sorry, the x and y axes are solutions in this particular case. Okay, so they are these two null clients, x equals zero null client and y equals zero null client are solutions and they cannot be crossed. The other two can be crossed. To find the equilibrium point, set the x and y null clients equal to each other. So here were the x null clients. Oh. I'll never learn. And this is the y null cline. So if I set these two equal to each other, I get the first one. This will give me that. Set these two equal to each other, I get this one. Set these two equal to each other, I get um, this point, one half, one half. Notice I did not set x null client equal to x null client. That will not give me an equilibrium point. So here are four equilibrium points, and we'll investigate these by using linearization. Here's the phase plane showing the, um, this is the graph I stole off the internet, um, but it shows the null clients, and it shows the x null clients in red and the y null clients in blue. That's nice and artistic and helps you see them. Remember that the two axes, this one, this null client right here, is a solution, and this is a solution. It can't be crossed. The others can be crossed. So something out here will go, well, in a horizontal direction. Okay. And if it crosses into this region D, it's going to cross vertically into D, from B into D. And here are the equilibrium points here, the one on half, and the two, uh, zero, two. These crossings right here are the crossings of two x null clients, so they don't count. They don't give an equilibrium point. And here's a crossing of two right here, crosses, uh, crossing of two um, y null clients, so they don't give an equilibrium point. Then we go through the same process as before. Take those derivatives and end up with a Jacobian matrix. This is the Jacobian matrix in general. 
and start evaluating it at each of the equilibrium points. So here was the origin. Um, the Jacobian evaluated at the origin turns out to be a diagonal matrix, so we don't have to do anything further. We can just pick the two um, eigenvalues off of the diagonal, and there are one and two, two distinct real eigenvalues of positive sign. This equilibrium is a source. Now we move over to the second, or rather up to the second uh, equilibrium point, which is 0, 2. Evaluate the Jacobian matrix here at 0, 2. And again, we end up with um, a diagonal matrix. It's convenient. So we have two distinct real eigenvalues of negative sign, both of negative sign. So this equilibrium point is a sink. Now the next two um, eigenvalues aren't so obvious, but the technique for finding them is exactly the same as in the previous chapter. So we have an equilibrium point at x equal 1, y equals 0. Here's the Jacobian matrix evaluated there. So at, at this point we can't pick off the eigenvalues, we have to solve for them. And we could write out the characteristic polynomial and all that, or we can just use the trace and determine it trace is minus 2, determinant is minus 2, and we can plug into the quadratic formula in that using trace and determinant and find in this case that we have again two distinct eigenvalues but they have opposite signs. So this equal, equilibrium point is a saddle. And this is the final equilibrium point for this system. Again, it's not such an easy matrix. We can't pick the eigenvalues off of here, but we can solve for them using the um, uh, quadratic formula and the trace and the determinant of the system. And we find that this one is a saddle also. Now we're back to the face portrait for that system, not showing any solution curves, just showing the eigen, um, the null, I'm sorry, the null clines and the equilibrium points. And what we know is that this equilibrium point at the origin is a source. You could have guessed it from looking at it. This is a sink from this. Um, you can't really tell that. You have to have more information from up there. And these two are saddles. Again, we didn't go find any eigenvectors. We stop at this point.